from that? Okay. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Yes, yes, you are with audible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sharing the screen. Just confirm the screen is visible to you. Okay. Yes, it is visible. Okay, okay, right. Okay. So today's topic will be from ICE to electric. Exploring the mechanics of electric motors in the electric vehicles, right? So as we all know that the electric vehicle is most trending technology around the world nowadays. Since the COVID has been uh, came, uh, the uh, electric vehicles are been more popular because particularly uh, to be saying in India, we are currently dependent on uh, fossil fuels, right? So we need to import all the crude oils from the foreign countries. So it's uh, very costly for us, and uh, it's also uh, it also creates lots of pollution. So in today's world, we are going to what's the electric vehicles, and for electric vehicles, the most important component is electric motor. So in past or in uh, in uh, past uh, era, we used to use. Uh, internal combustion engine. So today we are also going to see what is the internal internal combustion engine and how it has replaced to electric motor. So what we are going to see today, we are going to see what is ICE, means internal combustion engine, fundamentals of electric motors, advancements in electric motor technology, application and impact of electric motors. I hope I'm clearly with uh, clearly audible to all, and screen is visible. Yes, sir. Okay. So see what happened uh, in past. We were using internal combustion engine. We used fuel and the mixture fuel, nothing but like petrol, diesel, or in the external combustion engine we use coal, right? So this was the form of fuels, different types of form of fuels. Nowadays, we are also using the LPG and CNG gases for the uh, combustion of uh, uh, fuel and uh, to run the uh, internal combustion engine. But it creates lots of pollution. So that is the major drawback of the internal combustion engines or the using of fuels. So internal combustion is nothing but an internal combustion engine is a heat engine that uses a fuel and air mixture to create the energy throughout the combustion. So what happens in engine? The heat is being generated inside, inside the engine with the help of fuel and air mixture. So your fuel and air mixture is mixed together to form the combustible material or combustible mixture. And after that, during the short circuit of from the spark plug, what happened? That mixture of air and fuel get combust, right? It get exploded, and the combustion occurs inside the engine when we are expanding uh, gases pushes a piston that rotates the crankshaft. So what happens here? When that fuel and air mixture is burned, some energy is released, and when that energy is released, there are gases formed. And we all know that when the gases are heated, they are expanded. Right. So when that expanded gases move towards the piston, it pushes the piston downwards and it will rotate crankshaft. So what is the crankshaft? What is piston? We are going to see in the next slide. Right. And this crankshaft will drive the vehicle spin. So piston is moving in vertical direction. Right. Piston is moving up and dive, down. But we need our wheel, uh, wheels to rotate in uh, circular uh, motion. Right. In rotational motion, we need to convert that energy. So crankshaft is nothing but it's like a, it's designed in such a way it will it will uh, it will convert that piston's vertical motion into rotational motion. Okay, so I hope I'm cleared with what is internal combustion engine. Right. So this is the 
exploded view of the four wheeler internal combustion engine so here we can see there are different types of parts inside the electric vehicle uh, inside the internal combustion engine and you can also see that how much heavy it can be right so this is cylinder head right this is the uh, head cylinder head right this is cylinder head cover right this is the engine block and downward we can see the oil pan here we can see this is intake manifold and this is exhaust manifold okay here is the uh, oil filter water pump timing belt pulley oil gasket pan oil pan drain bolt drain bolt crush washer right engine block exhaust manifold right exhaust manifold gasket cylinder head distributor distributor o ring head gasket rubber gomments so see what happens here as we can see this is the intake manifold right so from here the fuel and the mixture of air will come inside this engine block right and this is exhaust manifold right when the combustion will happen and that fuel mixture will release the energy and there is only smoke left behind that smoke will be exhausted do will be exhausted from this exhaust manifold so we will remove this and this exhaust manifold will be connected to the silencer of the vehicle right so from this exhaust manifold we will remove all this all the harmful gases like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide right from this exhaust manifold these are the gaskets you can see in this orange color right these are the gaskets which makes this whole engine waterproof and air proof okay so we don't want any foreign material to go inside our engine or we don't want any kind of energy or any kind of leakage from the engine to the outside world right so we need this gaskets to seal the vehicle to seal the engine properly so that there is not any kind of leakage inside the engine okay this is distributor from here the fuel will be distributed this is the head gasket which will be which will be uh, the sealant for the cylinder head and engine block this will be cylinder head cover right this is the camshaft camshaft is nothing but you can see this valve here in the second picture we need to open and close this valve at particular time so with the help of this camshaft we will be opening this wall and we will be closing this wall this camshaft will be connected with the belt drive or chain drive system with the oh sorry okay this camshaft will be connected to the crankshaft of the engine with the help of belt drive or chain drive system right this is the oil pan you might be knowing that we need to put some oil inside the uh, engines right so that we can lubricate the pistons and we can cool them down so this is the oil pan here the engine oil is been stored right and when that oil is been used or when we need to remove that oil we will use this oil pan drain bolt right so this oil drain bolt will be used when we will open that drain bolt all that dirty oil all that used oil will be removed from this drain bolt and after that we will close that drain bolt and we will again insert the new oil inside that this is the timing belt pulley so as i have told you this crankshaft and camshaft are connected so we need this timing belt drive pulley so that we can open and close this valves at particular time right so we need to set this timing belt drive pulley very precisely if anything wrong wrong happens with this timing chain or timing belt the engine will not perform properly and we will lose our efficiency right the efficiency will get reduced okay so now you can see this how many parts are there inside this particular internal combustion engine again due to this lots of parts 
it gets very heavy it will also increase the weight of the vehicle also this is just like uh, 50% of parts i have shown here you i have shown here on the screen there are like uh, like two times three times uh, more than this because each and every part in the internal combustion engine will be moving right uh, let's say it's piston it's crankshaft camshaft oil filter there will be pumps inside that right there are lots of moving parts what happens due to this moving parts the efficiency gets reduced the number of moving parts will efficiency will reduce again the number of parts will increase the more maintenance it will require the main of engine will produce lots of smoke it will produce lots of noise there are lots of lots, uh, lots of moving parts and it will cause vibrations in the vehicle which will reduce our emissions right we need Um, we need to spend a lot of money for the maintenance, change the oil, right? To clean the pistons, to clean the engine, to clean the uh, intake manifold, to clean the exhaust manifold, to clean the air filters, clean the fuel filters, to clean the oil filters, right? So there are lots of maintenance part, parts in, that, uh, in this internal combustion engine. Apart from this, again, cost will increase due to all these things. So, due to the advancement of technology due to advancement of uh, each and every component inside the makers due to the lots of uh, initiative by the governments regarding the green energy sustainable energy regarding the green city makers are now demanded in the market You are not audible. Uh, Shivam, your voice is not audible. Uh, Just wait for a minute. Uh, like something like that issue. Martin and will join you soon. Hello. 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 Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Now you are audible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really sorry regarding this. Uh, there was a small glitch inside in the Wi-Fi. Okay. Uh, from where we left? Can you please uh, confirm from where I need to restart? For that electrical. motor you was just yeah, mentioning yeah, yeah. Uh, now this screen is visible to you all 
Tata, it is now visible. Okay. So, see, what is electric motors? Electric motor is nothing but it is used to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. So, right. So, can anyone just tell me what the internal combustion engine can be defined? Okay. My question is to you how we can find internal combustion engine? It converts the chemical energy into mechanical energy. Right, exactly. It converts the burns chemical burns energy burns into. Burns. Right, right. So we will burn the fuels, means we will burn the chemical energy. With the help of that chemical energy, we will produce heat. With the help of that heat and that expanded gases, we will drive the piston and the mechanical energy will be generated, right? Again, after that mechanical energy is generated, we need to run all that energy from the different types of gears, from the clutch plates, from the transmissions. So when this chemical energy has been converted into mechanical energy, and you can see there are lots of moving parts like camshaft, oil filter, all these things. So there are lots of energy that is wasted, right? So efficiency of internal combustion engine is very less as compared to electric motors. So electric motor is nothing but it converts electrical energy into mechanical energy and we can directly send that mechanical energy to transmission, right? So very less number of parts are there inside the electric motor. The efficiency is very high. Again, the power is very high. Right. So most electric motors operate through the interaction between the motor's magnetic field and electric current in the winding to generate a force in the form of torque applied on the motor shaft. Right. The electric motors can be powered by DC source such as batteries or rectifiers or by alternating current AC source such as power grids, inverters or electrical generators. Right. So Electric motors operate most from the interaction between the motor's magnetic field. So here the motor generates the magnetic field with the help of winding. Uh, generally, we are using copper winding there. Okay. So with the help of that copper winding, we are going to send electric current to that copper winding and it will generate the magnetic field. And when that magnet is, magnetic field is generated, it will interact with another magnetic field in the rotor and the motor shaft will rotate, the torque torque will be generated, right? So there are different types of motors, AC motors, DC motors, which we are going to see further. They can be powered with the help of direct current as well as in the, uh, alternating current, right? So as you can see on the screen, there are different types of motors, right? Electric motors, electric motors are classified into DC motors, AC motors, and other motors. These other motors are also known as special motors, right? So normally we are having DC shunt motor, separately excited motor, series motor, PMDC motor, and compound motor. In AC motors, we are mainly focusing on induction motor because that are mostly used inside the uh, uh, industrial purpose as well as commercial purpose, right? Synchronous motor and other motors, special motors, are like step motors, brushless motor, hysteris motor, reluctance motor, and universal motor. So now we need to focus mainly on which motors are used in electric vehicles. Now you can see on this screen the brush DC motor. It is mainly used in electric vehicle. Brushless DC motor. Nowadays we are using brushless DC motor in most of two wheelers and most of three wheelers in the electric world, right? Induction motors were used rarely in the past uh, eras, right? Permanent magnet synchronous motor. PMSM motor is mostly used inside the four wheeler electric vehicles, right? We mostly use PMSM motor in four wheeler electric vehicles and brushless DC motor in two wheeler electric motors. So, what is brushed DC motor? 
So as you can see, this is north and south. These are the permanent magnets, right? We are having the winding, which is known as rotor winding, which is made up of copper. Okay. This is the commutator. Here we are having graphite brushes, right? So these are the main construction points or constructional uh, constructional uh, material of the brush DC motor BDC, where the permanent magnets or wound copper coils are made up of stator, right? Stator is made up of permanent magnets or wound copper coils. And the rotor is of two type with the wound copper coils. You can see this, right? These are the copper coils, right? And here are the commutator. Here is the commutator and here are the brushes. In this image, you can also see how the commutator is placed along with the brushes. So what happens when we apply the voltage to this commutator, okay, to the brushes, the electricity will be transferred to the brushes from to the commutator, from the brushes to the commutator, and it will go inside the winding. It will go inside the copper winding. And when the copper winding will get energized, it will form the magnetic flux. And that magnetic flux will interact with this north and this south pole, which are mainly made up of permanent magnets, or there might be coils which will get energized, which will act as an electromagnet to generate the electromagnetic field, and it will rotate our rotor. And at that rotor, the shaft will be connected, and with the help of that shaft, we can acquire the mechanical energy and we can use as per our application. Okay, so these are the main components of the BDC, electrical connection, brush system, commutator, permanent magnet, iron core, flange, and housing. Okay. So what is the principle of electric motor? An electric motor works on the principle that when electric current is passed through a conductor placed normally in a magnetic field, a force acts on the conductor as the result of which the conductor begins to move and mechanical energy is obtained. Right. So we all know that the principle of electric motor is nothing but whenever we are passing the electric current through a conductor which is placed in a magnetic field, the force will get acted on it and we can obtain the mechanical energy, rotational energy, right? from that mechanical components, just like the rotor. So here we can see the simple construction of DC motor where this coil is powered with the help of magnetic field. When the coil is powered, the magnetic field will get generated around the armature, right? And we can see this permanent magnets north and south here. They will interact with this magnetic field which is generated in the armature and it will rotate. Right. As it will rotate, the directions, the polarity will get changed, right? The north will become south, south will become north, and it will again rotate in the further direction, right? It will rotate until we stop the electrical supply. So here are some basic types of uh, DC motors. We can see this separated, uh, separately excited shunt motor, series motor, and cumulative compound motor. So you can see this, the armature winding, right? When we apply the voltage to the armature, the IA means armature current will flow from this winding. And this is VF, VF means field winding, right? There are two main components. One is armature winding and another is field winding. So we need to power both differently. The armature winding will be powered with the different voltage source and the Field winding will power with the help of different power source. The IF will run from this F1 and F2, and IA will run through this A1 and A2. This is shunt motor. We can see this shunt motor, right? The armature and field is connected in parallel. Same voltage has been applied to the armature winding as well as field winding. Okay. Yes. Any questions? This 
Which is there any question? Okay, you can see the series, right? S1, S2, A1, A2 has been connected in series with this S1, S2, means we can see the same voltage has been applied. Current will be flowing from this I through this A1 and A2. This I current will be flowing from this A1 and A2. Same current will be flowing from S1 and S2. This series, right? And this is cumulative, which is also known as compound mode. Here we are see this. The field winding is connected in series with the armature as well as in parallel with armature. Here, the voltage source will be common from the for the armature as well as field winding. The current which will be moving from this S1 and S2 will be same as the current flowing through this armature and some current will be flowing from this F1 and F2. Right. So see what happens here. We have seen we have seen here brushes, right? So due to this brushes, what happens? There are sparking, right? So you can see, right? Due to this brushes, there there is sparking. There are some frictional losses as well as there are some electric losses as well as there are some heat losses there. Due to the friction. So when we are trying to power this with the help of electrical supply, due to that frictional losses at uh, due to that uh, heat energy, the brushes damage. We are those brushes. So we need to give some openings. We need to give some uh, ventilations. That pressure will get, get uh, will get cool and it will not increase the heat of the motor. So, any moment, how why we can't know this this motor enter the electrics? Hello. Hello. Hello, am I audible? No, sir. Hello. Why is it the interruption? Uh, actually, my question is, why we can't use this brush DC motor inside the electric vehicles? Hello. Any questions from Samarjit Singh? Hello. Am I audible? No, sir. Continue, please. There was some problem in wires. That's why I am on my mic. Sir. Okay. Okay, so due to this heat losses, we can't use this BDC motor inside the electric vehicle because we need our electric vehicle to be vehicle to be waterproof and fire waterproof as well as airtight, right? So if we will be using this BDC motor, we need to give some openings for the ventilation and we can't use that electric motors inside the rain or on the road because there is lots of dust. If any dust will go inside the motor, it will damage all the windings and it will damage all the air gaps between it. Right. So this is the main reason we can't use BTC motor inside the electric vehicle. That's why what we have done, we have done some advancement inside the technology. So this advancement Advancement is 
in the electric motors motor technology came in the form of brushless dc motor so with the help of bdc motor we have converted that bdc motor into brushless dc motor we have removed the brushes from the bdc motor and we have created the brushless dc motor okay so what is the brushless dc motor it will not have any kind of brushes the brushes will be absent if there is no brushes there will be less heat generated there will be less losses there will be less frictional losses and due to this less frictional losses our efficiency will get increase again due to less frictional losses the wear and tear of the brushes will get this discontinued right so again the maintenance of the motor will get reduced okay again the heat will not get generated so we will not need to give any kind of heat treatments or we, uh, we will not need to give any kind of ventilations inside the motor so that we can make our bldc motor water tight and air tight all right so the stator will be wounded with coils as we can see this is the stator which is wounded with the copper coils here we can't see any kind of brushes because brushes is absent from this rotor will have permanent magnets over the shaft which is connected to the wheel see in this center center picture you can see this is the rotor right and in this way we will attach the rotor and the stator and the hall effect sensor will be connected to the rotor shaft hall effect sensor is nothing but it is a sensor which will define the position of rotor the rotor is on the north side or the south side so what is the advantage of this motor it will produce high torque high efficiency and high power as well as it will be very energy efficient right it will be very energy efficient it will it will provide very high power which is most mainly required for the vehicles to drive right it will produce high torque so that you can carry uh, as much uh, the internal combustion vehicle can carry right? but the main requirement is a magnets may be costly and the cost of sensor we need components to run the dc motor you can see in the image you can see in the image this is the mcu which is uh, uh, the full form is motor unit right there is the driver circuit these are the mosfets what happens mosfet gets turned off with mc and this wind energy when this winding will get energized this motor will interact with this winding winding magnetic field right and the rotor will get rotated this is the phase oh, a b yeah. phase b c and phase c a this kind of hey, wave will yeah. get generated yes any questions hello am i audible hello hello yes so see there are mainly two types of motor one is outrunner motor where the stator is at the outer side and the rotor is at inner side hello Hello. Sam, can you please uh, turn off your voice? Sam, can you please turn off your mic? Okay. 
Okay, I am audible. So the, there are two types of BLDC motors, right? One is outrunner motor. Here we are having stator at the inner side mm -hmm. and the rotor is directly fitted to the wheel, right? So you can see in the image, this is the state, this is the stator, the inner part is stator, and the outer part is rotor. So this rotor has yeah. been connected directly to the wheel so that we can drive our vehicle. This type of motor is generally known as hub motor and which is used in mostly the electric scooter. It, it will eliminate the space to mount the motor. It is very compact, right? It will rotate slowly, but it is having very high torque and it is mainly used in hero and electric Okinawa motors. This is the inrunner motor, right? It is heavy motor. It will require lots of power, right? It will require the external transmission like belt or chain as we can see in the movie. This is the, uh, in the, as we can see in this uh, image, right? This is the uh, drive, right? This is the permanent magnets placed on this rotor and this the stator. So it is mainly used ether. It will give us good speed, but it will acquire lots of space and it will require lots of energy as well. Right? This is PMSM motor, permanent so magnet speed. synchronous motor. This motor is mainly used inside the electric four wheelers. You can see this, the permanent oh, no, no, no. magnets are there, right? Again, the stator core assembly is there and rotor core, core assembly is there. Here we are having bar wound wire, which is for the stator, oh, no. right? And here we are having the rotor. The permanent magnet are placed inside this rotor, as you can see in the V form, so that it will provide lots of starting torque, right? You can see this. These are the inlet and outlet pipe, right? What happens when we are driving this, when we are driving the electric vehicle, we are driving the electric vehicle on the roads on the sunny days, right? Uh, there are lots of energy, there is lots of uh, load on that motor, so it will get heated. So to remove that heat, what we are giving here, we are giving liquid cool system. So here are some fins inside this motor, the cold water will flow inside and the hot water will go outside. All right. So this is inlet and outlet. So there are some calculations, basic calculations we can see, right? The consumed electric power can be defined as the following formula P is equals to I into, right? So what is the formula of power? Voltage into current. So how much power is being generated by that motor? We can calculate with the help of this formula, right? We can measure the current with the help of, of uh, ammeter. We can measure the voltage with the help of voltage, right? So we are measuring voltage and current. When we will multiply that values, we will get power. To find out the torque, what we can do, right? The motor is supposed to do some work and the two important values to define how the powerful motor is, the motor speed and motor torque. The turning force of the motor, output the mechanical power of the motor could be calculated with the help of this use, with the help of this formula. P out is equal to tau into omega, right? So P out means power output will be measured in watts. T or tau means torque, which is measured in Newton meter, and omega, which is angular speed, which is measured in radian per second. Right? So to calculate omega, we can use the formula RPM. We can calculate the RPM with the help of uh, tachometer, right? Into 2 pi upon 60, right? So whatever the rotational speed is there, with the help of that, we can uh, multiply that rotational speed with, uh, with 2 pi upon 60 and we can get angular speed. When we will get angular speed, we can get P out and we can measure the torque, right? Am I clear with that?
Yes, sir. Sorry. So, here are some applications of the electric motor. Okay. As you can see, these are, these are some applications. So, mainly we are using electric motors inside the electric vehicles, right? There are different types of electric motors. Again, we have seen earlier, right? Permanent magnet synchronous motor, BLDC motor. Again, the BLDC motor is having two types BLDC hub motor and mid runner motor, which is also known as in runner and out runner motor, right? Apart from this, what does the electrical motor do? Electric motors are used in industrial automation, right? Can anyone tell me where uh, we can use electric motors inside the inter uh, industrial automation? For conveyor belts. Uh, right, conveyor belts. Okay, exactly. Lifts, lifts. Right, right, lifts. Again. Apart from this, any guesses? In lake. Sorry? In lake. Yeah, in lake. Okay. Sorry? Hello? Chiller, chiller. Right, in chillers. Okay. So see, in industrial automation, we can use uh, the motors in the robotics. Am I right? In robotics, we can use we can use for cooling applications, right? We can use for uh, cranes. We can use for conveyor belts. We can use for pumps, right? Again, for pumps, we can use we can use for uh, cooling applications. We can use for uh, drive trains. We can use for elevators. We can use for lifts, okay? And uh, what about uh, consumer electronics? Can anyone tell me uh, what is the use of motors inside the consumer electronics? Water pumps. Right, water pumps. Washing machine. Washing machine, right. Fans. Fans, right, exactly. We are having a uh, induction motor inside the fan, single phase induction motor. Nowadays, the BLDC motor is also been used. Some uh, advanced technologies have been developed. We are using BLDC motors inside the fan also, right? Apart from this, uh, the uh, in the mixers, right? In mixers, we are using the um, motors Again, inside your laptop, right? Inside the laptop, where we are using uh, yeah, motor, know. can anyone tell me? And fan, cooling fan. Right, cooling fan, right, exactly. Yeah. For cooling, cooling our laptop, cooling our uh, uh, motherboard, cooling the processor, we are using that uh, laptop fan, right? The, sorry, sir. Hello? Simply is that transformer, which is also me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, the there are some cooling fans on the transformer as well, right? Again, the in uh, washing machines, right? In the fridge, in fridge, there is the compressor. To run that compressor, we need the electric motor. In the ACs, even the ACs, we need the electric mo motor to run the fans. Okay. So there are n number of applications of the electric motors and this. The whole world has been drive with the help of electric motors, not only in electric vehicles. Apart from the electric vehicles, there are lots of uh, lots of things that are totally running on electric motors, right? Electric motor is uh, the most important, the most game-changing innovation uh, in this world, right? After the electricity, after the light bulb. The electric motor is the most important part of our day-to-day -day life. Without electric motors, we can't even talk, right? I'm taking a webinar on my laptop, right? And what happens if there was no motor? How can I cool my laptop? Okay, even the fan, even the AC. So electric motor is very uh, beautiful topic. Electric motor is very vast topic as well. 
and it's also the most easy topic if you try to understand it from the basics okay so what is the impact of electric motors again we can see the environmental benefits at earlier uh, the petrol and the electricity how it can be deferred how uh, like uh, will happen uh, if you need to use the uh, internal combustion engine to run the run your household fan right so there there will be less air and there will be lots of smoke there so electric motor is the clean source of mechanical energy right so we are getting the clean source of mechanical uh, electric motor is the clean source of mechanical energy we are getting mechanical energy and we can use that mechanical energy for various kinds of applications just some example i have given you the energy efficiency the energy efficiency of electric motor is very greater as compared to the internal combustion engine right? because there are less number of moving parts there are less frictional losses there are less vibrational losses as well as there are lo less heat loss in the electric motor okay. again transportation electric efficient nowadays we are not only using electric motors inside the electric two wheelers and electric three wheelers we are also using the electric motors inside the buses inside the electric trains right so these are the some important transportation electrification in again uh, uh, you may know that the tata has recently launched uh, tata is going to launch the loading electric vehicle right like tata ace and uh, that right it will be carry uh, like uh, uh, 20 to 30 tons of loads right so even not only for the commercial not only for the commercial purpose the electric vehicles will be also used for industrial purpose right so that's all from my side i hope uh, this uh, session was uh, valuable for all. the audience is open for any kind of question if there is any kind of question you you are free to ask Hello. Hello. Yes. Any questions, please? If you have any question, please ask. It is very beautifully explained. I think hardly any question is left. Sir, are you able to share the PDF? Yeah, it will be shared. Yes, any questions? Yes, Kanu, please. Kanan Gupu, you can ask the question. Ah, uh, sir, very good evening, sir. Yeah, good. I am able to. Hello. Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah, sir. Uh, sir, actually, uh, the uh, seminar was everything was fine, sir. Uh, but can you tell me, like, uh, what is the complete procedure for the uh, battery to be recycled in the automobile vehicle from the automobile vehicle, sir? Battery to be recycled. Ah. Uh, I I haven't got your question. No, sir. Actually, the session is about the uh, IC, uh, uh, like altering the uh, by battery, right? By battery, right? Right. Yes, sir. Uh, so, right. Uh, anyway, we are going to use a battery as an alternate source for the power uh, source for the automobile side. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any complete procedure? Is there uh, to uh, made a complete recycle of the battery, sir? That we are going to use in automobile in future. see see uh, we can't totally like we can't 100% recycle the recycle any kind of battery not only the ev battery uh, we can't totally uh, recycle uh, the battery we 
can acquire the essential minerals we can uh, uh, we can recycle the uh, some parts like there are there is nickel there is copper right there is some uh, lithium right because there are some active materials inside the battery which mm -hmm. will get deactivated after some time which life will get reduced which li uh, the life will get ended so we can't use that material uh, obviously we can use that material in other uh, applications right uh, are you getting my point but not yes, for the battery yeah we can like uh, let's say there is uh, some material uh, i'm having lithium ion battery pack i can recycle that lithium ion battery pack the no doubt in that right but only 50 to 60% of that material i will be using to create my next battery remaining 40% will not be the waste remaining 40% can be used for the other application right for to creating like uh, non rechargeable batteries let's say i'm just giving you example for creating non non rechargeable batteries for creating any kind of other material right mm -hmm. if there is lead inside that so we can use that lead or if there is some uh, active materials there is graphite we can use that graphite for the other applications right so this is the uh, procedure we can't 100% recycle that yes we can 100% recycle that but we can't use it again for the same purpose only the 50 60% will be used again there are lots of losses there are lots of active materials which can't be used for uh, other purpose right there are some toxic material as well right so there is uh, there is lots of long procedure we need to collect that material we need to shred it uh, we need to right we need to shred that material we need to sort that materials again uh, if you are having any kind of battery firstly you need you will need to discharge it right you will need to separate all the materials like there are different types of material like plastic metals electrolytes liquids right so you need to separate that material again you need to recover all those materials and again uh, if there is like uh, any kind of material which is toxic and which can't be reused which can't be reused you need to properly dispose that uh, or it might uh, cause any kind of harm right understood sir uh, but uh, but concern is that uh, see uh, when we are using ic engines no like there is no threat on something else is there there is only threat is called pollution right but in ic right. uh, in motors uh, what we are going to use in uh, automobiles definitely we are going to use a lead battery as a power source right uh, lithium ion battery we are using uh, lithium ion battery inside okay lithium, lithium ion battery or lead batteries right so there is not a complete re recycling process right we can't able to like uh, able to dump it somewhere else uh, maybe like if it dump yeah uh, see we can't remove the battery from the electric vehicle and directly we can buy the battery and we can place inside the electric that's not our part right you can't use first of all you can't uh, replace battery by yourself you need to go to service station from where you have buyed the electric vehicle right so what let's say tata i'll give the example of tata so if you are using the tata nexon uh, mm -hmm. you have used it for 5 years so you need to change this battery right mm -hmm. so you can't bring a battery home and you will charge it and you will throw that battery inside the garbage and they will collect and they will dump. no that's not going to happen you will need to go to the tata showroom mm -hmm. there they will firstly take your battery they will replace that battery and they will not give you your old battery they will they will like uh, they will properly dispose it or they will properly reuse it that's not that in is, our that is hand. my question sir that is my question sir how they are yeah, yeah. going to dispose it yeah so they are having industries right so let's say if there is xyz manufacturer of lithium ion batteries so mm -hmm. this exhausted battery or this uh, dumped battery will go to them they will recycle it they will uh, acquire 60% or 50% uh, whatsoever 80% of material they will mm -hmm. use in their newer products right mm -hmm. whatever the 40% material will be remaining they will give to other company that companies will make other products from that bat, uh, that material that's how it can be recycled mm -hmm. no understood sir but for the uh, electric motors the maintenance will be high right the maintenance and everything will be high 
All right. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes, any other questions? Excuse me, sir. Yes. I'm Ganashri. I'm just studying. I'm in first year in electrical and electronics. I just have a basic okay. like doubt. Uh, so why do we, like you said, uh, like what kind of electric motors we'll use in the vehicle, sir? AC motors we'll use. Uh, mainly we use BLDC motor and PMSM motor, permanent magnet synchronous motor. Okay, synchronous motors means it is classified under uh, uh, AC motor or DC motor, sir? See, here is a combination of both PM-DC motor, permanent magnet synchronous motor. Here we are having combination of both. Here we are having brushless motor also and induction motor also. It's a bit complex, okay. but uh, I'll try to explain you in short. It is having properties of brushed motor, uh, sorry, brushless motor as well as the properties of induction motor. So what happens okay. when we are acquiring high speed or high torque, the BLDC motor can't perform well. Okay, but induction motor can perform well. So yeah. what the researchers have done, they have combined both these motors and they have formed permanent magnet synchronous motor, which are having properties of both motors. Okay, thank you. Sir. So, why can't we use like separate induction motor or separate uh, DC motor? Why we can't use like that, sir? Or any yeah. uh, research on that or any advancement yeah. advancement in that that's never made till now. Right, 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 right. I have shown you in the PPT itself, right? I have told you this uh, previously. See, first, what was the, what was the motor? We, are, we were having brush DC motor, right? We were having DC motor. It was having brush. The yeah. brush DC motor will obviously have the brushes, right? You are getting. I'm. Uh, you are getting me. Uh, you are getting the point. The brush DC motor will have brushes. When that brushes will send the electrical current to the commutator, it will create sparking. It will create. Uh, friction, it will create heat, right? Is that clear? See, here yes, is the sir. graphite brushes, here is the commutator. This commutator yes, will sir. rotate and this brushes will be connected here. It will generate heat, it will create sparking. So it, the efficiency will get reduced, obviously. So what happens to remove this heat we need to give some openings here, right? We, I, I'll need to give some openings here so that my brushes and my commutator will remain cool, right? But in it's electric up. motors, right? But in electric motors, uh, in electric vehicles, can I use this brush motor? No, because it will produce more uh, heat and friction. So right it can't again, be right again, to remove that heat, I'll need to give some opening to that motor. From that opening, yeah. the air will enter. From that opening, the dust on the road will enter. From that opening, if I am driving my electric vehicle inside the rain, right, the yeah. water yeah. will enter. Obviously, yeah, yeah, if it breaks the air gaps. Right, it will bridge the air gap, it will bridge the electrical circuit, right? The uh, dust will uh, get acquired on the um, air gaps and it will uh, choke the motor. Yes, sir. So, what we have done, we have advanced the technology and we have generated the BLDC motor, right? You can see the advancement in electric motors. Brushless. Now we have, okay. right. So now from this DC motor, from that brush DC motor, we have removed brushes. So if there is brushes, obviously there will be less friction. There will be less heat. There will be less, yes, there sir. will be less losses, right? Again, yeah. if there is less heat, I will not need to give any kind of opening there. It means I can make my motor airtight and water tight. Yeah. Right? It's, so this is advancement yeah. in electric motors. Okay. 
Okay. I got the point. Thank you. Yes, any questions? Yes, any questions from the audience? Okay. I hope so. I have cleared all the questions. Okay. So thank you, everyone. I hope this session was valuable for you all. And I hope I have cleared all the questions and you got the points I need to say. Yes, yes, there is, please. Just one last question. Yes, yes, obviously. Actually, I'm from Maharashtra. Uh, Diva Patil and uh, okay. I have a team, a team called Team Error, and we are participating in e-mobility competitions, mostly SIP or I SAE. Okay, okay. So my question is, okay, which kind of motors should we use for uh, e-mobility? For mostly two wheelers, uh, hub motor, BLDC hub motor, or mid drive motor. See. It depends. If you are talking about the scooters, right? If you are talking about the scooters, the BLDC hub motor is perfect for the scooters. Okay. okay. If you are talking about the bikes, you will need to use the mid runner motor there because the bike is having heavy chassis. The bike is bigger. The load bearing capacity of bike is greater. Again, in the bike, we need the greater speed. So that won't be compatible for the hub motor there. So in bike, you will need the mid runner motor, which will give you lots of power, which will give you lots of speed. Again, the tires uh, are bigger. Again, the battery pack is bigger inside the uh, bike. So you, obviously, you can use for uh, you. Obviously, you can go for the uh, mid runner motor inside the bike. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Hello. Uh, good evening, yeah. sir. Good evening. Uh, uh, sir, can you share PDF of these uh, these topics? Uh, yes. Uh, no, you can contact to our uh, HR team. Uh, they will be sharing with us. Okay. Okay. So, thank you, everyone. I hope uh, everything is cleared from my side. I hope this session was valuable for you all. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks, sir, for hosting the webinar. Your expertise and insights were invaluable for our learners. I would like to take the opportunity to introduce our company, ISI India Products and Services, that we offer in EV technology with small video. So kindly have a look on video. As we are living in the fast-changing world of electric vehicles, ISA India is leading a tech organization, paving the way for innovation and devotionalizing the ecosystem. It is bridging the gap between industry and academia and bringing all the stakeholders to the same table. From 2013, our parent organization has been tirelessly working to create an ecosystem for skill development, research, innovation, and entrepreneurship in the electric vehicle industry. Through CSR skill development and partnership with GIZ, Data Technologies, Varad Crop Science, Kalika Industries, Chalna Jan Seva, Masiya, Ipka Laboratories, etc. And with national and international e-mobility events such as Electric Solar Vehicle Championship, Formula Imperial, Indian Karting Race, E-Bike Design Challenge, we have provided a platform for over 3 lakh students from more than 750 colleges and universities to come up with the innovative projects. In addition to this, we are offering various skill development programs faculty development programs, corporate trainings, and spectrum of courses with duration from 9 to 12 months with live and recorded interactive classes with the added flexibility of paying after course completion. For our contribution towards building sustainable way forward in EV, we have got recognitions such as the National Youth Award from 
Ministry of Youth Affairs, Government of India, Titans of Technology Award, Indian Star Award from Earth Network USA, and the Social Entrepreneurship Award. And we have also joined hands with Automotive Skill Development Council, All India Council for Technical Education, National Skill Development Corporation, Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, and various automotive industries which validate our global impact and commitment towards excellence. We are now a global partner for talent nurturing in the automotive industry. We are fostering the youth for the global EV market and have recently joined forces with partners in Malaysia, Indonesia and South Africa. According to the economic survey, in India the market for electric vehicle is expected to grow really fast, about 49% every year from 2022 to 2030. This means we could see 10 million electric vehicles sold every year in which led to 50 million direct and indirect jobs by 2030. We are committed to sustainable mobility solutions and our industry-aligned programs cater academia, industry and government sectors. Our expertise in the industry has led us to design cutting-edge technological solutions for the growing electric vehicle industry. We promote project-based learning, hands-on training, skill development initiatives, vocational training, research, entrepreneurship, public-private partnerships, awareness and outreach programs. Our state-of-the-art facility, the Center of Excellence for Electric Vehicle, is dedicated to spreading the word about electric vehicles by facilitation of technological advanced solutions. EV Tech Lab It's a high-tech lab designed for students studying engineering, ITI, and polytechnic students getting job training. Think of it as a space where creativity meets actual hardware solutions. People here get to dive deep into the physical part that make electric vehicle work. This model is also helping our partners for community skilling of various job roles such as electric vehicle technician, vehicle assembly operator, charging station operator and technician, and workforce for electric vehicle powertrain, battery and BMS maintenance, etc. Second model, that is our center of excellence for electric vehicle. It's a combination of labs and offering both hardware and software solutions, under which we have established end-to-end -end solutions for electric and hybrid vehicle design, powertrain, battery and BMS, EV charging, IoT for experimental learning, testing and prototyping. The solution we are providing is unique and help our learners for upskilling research by getting experimental data and plotting graphs. Our goal is to impart industrial knowledge by establishing pioneering center of excellence. These centers developed in collaboration with universities, industry partners and government entities. Our COEs provide integration of EV curriculum in BTEC, MTEC and other academia programs. Research and vocational NSKF courses align with the national education policy. Plus, our COEs also support the startup ecosystem by providing facilities for design, prototyping and product testing. Our labs are making difference. We have established several labs across strategic locations with all kinds of stakeholders like industry, Hero Motor Corp, with Government of Kerala in partnership with MG Motors at two locations, IIT Mandi, private universities like SRMU, Kalgutias University, Sharda University, an NGO with Kovadhanika Village by ISKCON Temple, and various top universities and institutes across India. Our commitment to excellence is unwavering, and by 2025, we aim to establish over 250 plus centers of excellence worldwide. With India rapidly moving toward an electric only future, ISI India is well positioned to develop the workforce prepared for the international arena. Join us on this electrifying journey towards a sustainable and innovative future. Thanks for watching the video patiently. So don't miss out on this opportunity to discover the endless possibilities of EV. So any of you want to enroll in this course, Kindly send us inquiry through a QR code displayed on your screen and take your first step towards a more sustainable and exciting future. And also we are having exciting offer on the occasion of Holy Festival. It's up to flat 40% off on the EV courses. So kindly visit website and take the advantages also. Thank you.